But you can see Latin America and the Caribbean, 7.3% uh, seven, uh, increase in the rate for women. Middle East, 11.7%. North Africa, 10.9%. Um, quite considerably higher than the projections for men. So the general picture that um, and that's expected to be uh, an increase in self-employment and contributing family labour for both men and women. And in some regions of the world, uh, it's expected that the percentage points increase will be higher for women than for men. And that's important because in, 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 in what we've seen in past crises is what's called the added workers effect. Um, even though women may be losing their jobs as uh, factories close and female participation right, rates may rise despite the reduction in the opportunities for waged employment. Uh, we saw that in Indonesia after the financial crisis in 1997. Uh, we saw it in Argentina after the so-called tequila crisis spillover from Mexico in 1995. Although the number of um, jobs um, that pay your wage or salary was falling, nevertheless, more women went into the labor market. Went into the labor market, of course, as a strategy to try and maintain household income uh, when other members of the family were losing their employment. But when we think of what kinds of work did these added workers, did they do, uh, tended to be in self-employment and contributing to family businesses, exactly this kind of vulnerable work, or as some people call it, informal work that the ILO expects to rise. So I think we can uh, expect to see in this crisis, in some countries, there will be uh, more women entering the labor market. But it's a bit of a distress sale that we're seeing there. Uh, not something that women are doing because of wonderful new opportunities of open work, but rather because um, other members of their family have lost opportunities. And those women are likely uh, to be going more into this vulnerable and informal work. And so that raises the question, does this informal paid employment provide a cushion uh, to households who've been hard hit by the economic crisis? Um, because informal employment is a bit broader than vulnerable employment because it includes all employment in unregistered enterprises and all employment that lacks rights to social protection is a very important share of employment in low income countries, more than 50% in most, is disproportionately female, serves domestic as well as export markets and often rises in recessions because this is where the added workers go. Well, one of the few um, pieces of new research that I've seen um, on this crisis that I'm going to refer to a little bit is a study by Uyghur, Women in Informal Employment, Globalizing and Organizing, which comes to the conclusion, no, we can't rely on informal employment to provide a cushion in this crisis because informal workers are losing earnings and hard hit. Those supplying the domestic market as well as uh, people supplying the export markets. So I, I want to refer a little bit to this study because I think it's um, a good model of the kinds of things that can be done by a partnership uh, between grassroots organizations on the ground, uh, between academics, and um, in which uh, the UN community and other um, donor organizations could support. Um, it's a kind of rapid response um, investigation conducted with partners in 10 cities in different parts of the uh, uh, Asia, Africa, Latin America. You see the list there. Um, the partners are important because the partners are organizations who've been working on the ground for a long time with informal workers and so who know a lot of the context and know how to, you can do, gather, gather together people quickly, um, select them on a useful basis. So uh, the study interviewed 164 informal workers distributed around these 10 cities. 79% um, of these people were women and they focused on three occupations in, for selecting these interviewees. Waste pickers, home-based workers, and street vendors. 
waste pickers are quite exposed to what's happening to international markets and are being hard hit by the fall in the prices for waste for processing. And indeed, the fall in the amount of waste, because it, it, it one perhaps the good aspect of the crisis is it was making companies think a lot more about their waste and to be less wasteful. But that meant for the waste pickers there was less waste for them to pick up you know, from businesses that were now trying to be more effective in their use of resources. The home-based workers were working on subcontract. These are people who work at home for pay uh, on subcontract to bigger organisations, typically producing things like garments or toys, uh, or in some countries it could be electronics, um, and um, sometimes serving the export market and sometimes serving the domestic market. And then street vendors who were serving the domestic market. Almost all of these uh, interviewed workers reported loss of earnings due to falling prices. They reported falling sales and more competition from new entrants who had lost jobs in formal employment. They were feeling the knock-on effects of the recession. And that South African street vendor uh, who was quoted in the report made the link very clear. Lots of factories near here have closed due to this recession. This has negatively impacted our business as these factory workers are our main customers. Well, I bet they're probably it's far more difficult to get information about how many street vendors are losing their livelihoods than how many factory workers are losing their livelihoods. But there's bound to be a knock-on effect. If factory workers lose their jobs, other people who are supplying them are going to lose their jobs. But that's far less visible. So I think we need to encourage more of these kinds of studies that can be done on a rather quick and dirty basis. If you've got the, if the organizations already on the ground in networks of partners, so if you, any of you here in the room are working with networks of partners of women's organizations, or indeed the organizations of both men and women with knowledgeable local organizations that know a lot about the local context, um, I think this kind of um, research, um, it's a, a small case study. We can't say, we can't generalize this to all waste pickers around the world, all home-based workers, all street vendors, all informal sector workers. But the kinds of things they report seem plausible. I don't think you need a PhD in economics to think that, that these are the kinds of things that are likely to happen. but. Um, they don't make the same kind of newspaper headlines as closures, factories, or mines.